Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. God's good and all the time. And all the time. Keep your distance the Lord out of you. Just say, David, God loves you. And I do too. And you love me. As much as I love you. Then nothing can break. I love you too. When I woke up early this morning, my heart was beating right on time. I said, Lord, I truly thank you for opening up these eyes of mine. But then I went over to the window and while I was peeping out the shade. Once again, I had to tell him, thank you, Lord, for letting me see another day. And now the sun was brightly shining and the wind was blowing not too strong. And the treetop just a few feet away, Brother Robin was singing a song. Now, I don't know what he was singing, and pretty soon he was on his way. But who's to say he wasn't being grateful, saying, Lord, thank you for another day. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I got more than enough reasons that a Robin got to give my Lord some thanks. And I know that we're a little bit anxious right now. We're a little bit afraid because we don't know really what's going on in our world right now. You have a right to be afraid. You have the right to be anxious. But I also want to let you know that you got a right to give the Lord praise and you got a right to give the Lord thanks for all that God has done in your life. Who do you think it is that has protected you during this time of uncertainty and you don't know it is only God that has watched over you and kept you and I know the mama taught you when you was a child and somebody do something for you, you're supposed to tell them what? Thank you. If God woke you up this morning, you ought to tell God thank you. If God woke started you on your way, then you ought to tell God thank you. If you got a reasonable portion of health and strength, you ought to be glad to tell God thank you. I know some of us might be waiting on somebody to get up here, say give me a J, now give me an E, now give me an X, now give me a U, now give me an S. I don't need nobody to stand up in front of me and talk and pride me and coach me on how I'm going to give God thanks, but I woke up this morning with my mind stay on Jesus because of what God has done in my life. I don't know what God has done for you. He might not have done anything in your life. Therefore, you can sit there and look pristine and cute like you got everything together. But for those of you that only know that I'm only holding on by the grace of God. I'm only standing here because of the grace of God. I'm only here because of his love for me. You ought to tell God thank you. God is good. God is good. I'm so glad to see everyone that is here on this morning. God has been good to us. He's been better to you than you can ever even consider being to your very own self. And the least we can do is give God thanks for what he has done for us. You know, that's the difference between joy and happiness. This is this different from the sermon. Happiness is, is contingent upon what you have going on in your circumstances. But joy is something that, man, I can be going through hell and I still got a smile on my face. I, I can be stuck between a rock and a hard place and I can still find a reason to keep my head lifted up because I got joy on the inside of me. And how many of y'all can attest to the fact this morning that this joy that I have, since you didn't give it to me, I dare not let you take it away. God is good. God is good. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Come to hear a word from the Lord. I believe you came to the right place. Follow me, if you will, to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter number 14. And we're going to begin at verse number 10 and conclude at verse number 15. The grass withers and the flower dove shall fade away. But the word of God shall stand forever. Exodus chapter 14, beginning at verse number 10. If you dare say, I'm ready. Read along with me. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto Jehovah, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore has thou dealt thus with us to bring us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we spoke unto thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it were better for us to serve the Egyptians 
than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Notice that's P-E-A-C-E, not P-I-E-C-E. Keep it on you, but it's not talking about that peace. Verse 15. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they should go forward. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, the Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. I want to talk about this morning something that all of us are acquainted with at some point in our life. When man was first put on this earth, man knew nothing about pain. Man knew nothing about sorrow. It was only after the fall of man that pain was introduced. You remember when he talked to Adam and he talked to Eve and said that you are going to have to work by the sweat of your brow and the serpent was going to bruise your head and you are going to bruise his heel. And then he talked to the woman and said that you were going to have to balance the pains of childbirth. All of us are, are, are acquainted with something that we call pain. So I want to talk about this morning the purpose in my pain. The purpose in my pain. Preach, you mean to tell me there's a purpose for me experiencing pain? Yes, there's a purpose in it. I want to help you figure out that this morning. The purpose behind my pain. I would first of all have you know that pain is not all purpose. In the pain is not always good. It's not always something that you can see or something that you can grasp right out the bat. Problems are visible. Purpose is not always visible. The problem is, Pharaoh is chasing me. That's the problem. The problem is that if he gets me back, he may kill me. The problem is, I have left who I used to be to become what I want to be. And my past is chasing me, but the purpose is in the chase. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you this morning. See, see, what I want you to get right now is that that is a reason for you experiencing pain in this life. That is purpose in your problem. That there's purpose even in the storms that you experience in this life. You're looking at what happened, but God is looking at why it happened. And you'll never be able to praise God about the what until you can look at the why. I don't like what happened, but I trust why it happened. Because even though I don't like what happened, all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Okay? That is a purpose behind everything that we go through in life, but the revelation comes in retrospect. What do you mean? Let's look at this. Let's go deeper. That these were runaway slaves. Even if they outran them, they would always be runaway slaves. Looking over their shoulder, wondering when their oppressor was going to catch up with them. Even though they were no longer oppressed, as long as the oppressor lived, the potential to be oppressed remained, which in and of itself is oppression. So I'm delivered out of bondage, but I'm still bound by the fear that maybe I'll go back into bondage here. I wonder how many people are afraid to be happy this morning because, man, I ain't no need to be getting happy because it ain't going to last that long. But I, I wonder how many people maybe in this room that are afraid to love because you say, man, man, they're going to be gone in two weeks. There ain't no need to be falling in love. And I wonder how many people in the room are afraid to try because, man, I failed last time. And I just don't want to fail again. You see, as long as you allow Pharaoh to chase you, you will always be a slave. As long as you allow Pharaoh to run behind you, you will always be a slave. You will never be free to be at your highest and be your best self because your oppressor is always approaching. Any day now, I'm going to get you back. I'm going to bring that addiction right back into your life. I'm going to bring that compulsive behavior right back into your life, and you will never be free. You ever seen somebody? Try to dominate 
somebody and they say stuff like, you'll never get free. Let me come down your shoe. You always do not want I don't care where you go. Call back to memory for some folks. So, so God, so God takes the children of Israel through the wall. They were saved through the water because their oppressor chased them to the wall. Everything that was God's came out of the wall. Everything that was not of God drowned in the wall. There are some things that God takes you through just so he can destroy some stuff around you. Did anybody see how pretty that was? There are some things that God has to take you through just to destroy the people that are running up behind you. You can't tell whether it's of God or not till you come out of the water and you ain't got no blood between you. Yeah. Somebody say, I got an offer. I went through the test, but thank God I got an offer. And I, you know, they might have stopped being my friends, but guess what? I got that way to offer me. Yep. Burial and resurrection. Paul says in the New Testament, Romans chapter 6, he that is dead is free from sin. Yeah. He's teaching about baptism here. That if we are buried with him in the likeness of death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection, so that the debt is paid by death, burial, and resurrection. Pharaoh really was chasing them because he thought he owned them. But God told Pharaoh through Moses, Israel is my son. My firstborn son, Israel is. In fact, I tell you what, I show you is my firstborn son. He says, I kill your firstborn son until you let my son go. But not in the Passover. That's why God went from house to house, letting the death angel take the firstborn son of Egypt, because he was saying, I'm going to show you what it's like to lose a son. He says, Behold, Israel is my son, even my firstborn son. Check out scripture. It says, Pharaoh says, He's my slave. God says that. He's my son. Pharaoh says that they are my slaves. That I paid for them and I own them. But God says, They are my children. Pharaoh said, I'm going after my slave. God said, Well, you better get ready because I'm right here with them. I'm going to deliver my children. What you don't understand is that talking about the same person. They're just looking at them from two different directions. The same discussion is being had about you, whether you know it or not. Whatever is chasing you. The devil ain't going to give up. He's not going to let up. He said, well, you know, they got just a little bit of a taste of it. So you know what? I'm just going to increase it just a little bit. Everywhere they turn, I'm going to put it right back in their face. Everywhere they go, I'm going to put it right back in their face. They're not going to be able to escape it because every time they think they're going to get away from it, I'm going to put it right back in front of them so that you will always be reminded of who you were. You will always be reminded of where you've been. You will always be reminded of what you were included in. But you know what you believe or not? You need folk in your life that remind you of your BC self. You need people in your life that remind you of who you were before you came in contact with Jesus. Because when you were trying to tell me of who I used to be, what I used to do, what I used to be involved in, is indicative of the fact that I'm no longer at that place in more than my life. And I can thank God that when you met me, I'm so don't condemn me because of where you met me, because of where you met me is not where I'm gonna be. At. So now, you former slaves, here they are being turned into sons and daughters. This, this is what you call a, a transformation. Where you get to a place in life where you gotta learn how to think differently. When you get to a place in your life where you gotta learn how to live differently. Yeah. When you gotta learn how to heal differently. Yeah. When you gotta learn how to love differently. Yeah. Because if what you've been doing up until now has not been working ever again, then you got to try something different. Yeah. And this is the place when you start 
acting like a son and a daughter, and you stop acting like a slave. Yeah, yeah. This is the place where you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. Here it is. What, what you, you went into it as a slave, but by the time they came out, they were sons and daughters. There's transformation. Which reality are you going to live in? What you were or what you are? Yeah. Why is it that when people demand you to be what you are, you refer to them to what you were? Well, you don't know, I, I didn't grow up, I grew up, I didn't have my dad, and you know, I, I grew up in the hood, and, and you know, my mama left when I was seven, and you know, wait, 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 you left all that in the war. I'm, I'm going to try again. You left all that in the war. This is the place where that stop. Come to a place in your life where you stop trying to take every little bit of yeah. thing and turn it into an excuse as to why you do what you do and why you have a reason to do what you do. At some point in your life, you ought to be trying to grow up. At some point in your life, what the hell you down back there ought not be bothering you now. How many folk that should be eating folks plate right now still sucking on baseball?
There are some things that once you go through it, when somebody tries to treat you like they used to treat you, you say, this is the place of termination. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, we're not going to go for this now. We're going to stop this right here. I have put up with this long enough. I have cried long enough. I have shared long enough. I will leave this right here. This was also a place, write this down, of identification. What do you mean, preacher? But then this was a place of identification. They didn't die. They just acted like they did. <laughs> Death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. It's what we do in that system. Uh -huh. We don't really die, but we identify with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The baptism pool is a place of identification. Yeah. It is where I identify yeah. with what he has already done. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're baptized, suffer to be so that it might fulfill all righteousness. I identify, if, if you are planted, if you are buried with them in the likeness of his identity, in the likeness, I didn't die, but it was like I did. I didn't die, but it was like I did. So when I'm baptized, it is like I died. Yeah. Death. Pays all this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember when my aunt passed not too long ago, and a, a few months after she passed, folks were calling, you know, her, her son, daughters, and other family. Man, I asked how to They said, you know, so and so, old and such and such. I said, what did I do with me? She said, oh, oh well, she, she left old us. I said, well, she old dog unto death. <laughs>
the promised land as of yet. I'm, I'm yet holding on by faith that I'll get to the promised land if I stay with God. But until I get there, I can praise him over what he has already done in my life. Any of y'all ever had to reserve yourself to the fact that until God does something new, until God blesses me, until God makes a way, I'm going to praise God over the stuff that he has already done in my life. A lot of us waiting on God to just do something mind-blowing and extravagant in our life. But you can learn how to thank God. Lord, to put food on my table. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I got some shoes on my feet. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I'm not somewhere in a convalescent hall. Lord, I should be doing 10 to 30 right now. But I thank God that the toy got put on. Lord, I They would always refer back to this one thing. This is the place. This is the place where this happened. This is where, this is where God gave us a foundation. This is where it happened. And all of us can point back right now. You don't even have to think that long. To the place where God met you at the womb. You was on the road. <laughs> Trying to get away. In the hollow tree. But God took care of that. And the children of Israel were no different from us. They were worried and they were afraid because of their oppressor. We right now are worried and we are afraid because of COVID 19. We are worried and we are afraid because of social and systematic injustice that has been put a certain race of people in this country. We are, we are afraid and we are worried, but the same encouragement that God gave to the children of Israel is the same encouragement that he has given us today. I will fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. What do you mean? I don't have to work. I don't have to get all excited. I don't have to wear myself into a fit. Man, I can sit back and wait. Yes. I'm going to be like Kermit. I'm going to sit on my tea until Jesus comes. I'm going to wait. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I can sit here and I can wait because I know God to be a waiting. Yeah. I'm sure about that. Don't lie to tell me. I know what God is able to do. Yeah. So, so I don't care who comes up and tells you anything or says you, you ought to read this book. You know, so, so many of us who can walk right now and all of a sudden, you know, Jesus ain't real, and all of a sudden, the Bible ain't real, and all of a sudden, we, we are the children of Israel, and all of a sudden, you know, we are the sins of this person, and all of a sudden, bro, we as a people are the only ones that are going together, and everybody else that God has created, and is not welcome into the fold, but I, I can't believe that, because the very reason that Jesus sent Peter to the house of Cornelius was to show an example that not only Jews were to be accepted, but the Bible. In fact, I really believe that Pharaoh 
their families. In the Old Testament, whenever they wanted to make something light, they would get it and they would put it in this form of soap. Put it in the barrel and they get it and they begin to trap it on their feet. But how are you going to get some clean and dirty? So there is need for us to have something lighter than snow. Something that can clean us up. Something that can make us whole. And that is found in the blood of Jesus Christ. But you see, what we enjoy as benefits of New Testament Christians, they received as they were both from the priest. Because now we experience the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We go down to a grave of baptism, and the scriptures, because we brought that blood to walk in the newness of life. They died to themselves that they went through the water, and God took care of every issue that was following them. But can you see that there were not only issues that were following them, there were issues within them. Four years, we've been dealing with the same issues. Man, some of us, we could have gotten four days. A four day trip turned into four years. Because even though the eyes were on Cain, the mind was still on each other. You might take me out in the hood, but you can't take me. So many times we pray and we 
across the sea or not? Like the Lord. Getting ready to cross the sea. Like the Lord. When you get on the other side, like the Lord. Because guess what? The problem, you thought you experienced some problems before you got over to the other side. Man, when you get on the other side, guess what? The devil is already kept out. He's already spied. If you don't put nothing in, how you gonna get some out? You got to bring your own motivation. All right, man. Every time I come into God's house, I get something. I get something that I can leave here and say, you know what? My life has been made better because of the word of the Lord. But my brother and my sister, if you're here today, if you're here today, all of us have had experiences with some Red Sea moments in our life. All of us have come to a place, have come to a point in our life where we knew in and of ourselves, I can't get to the other side. It was needful for God to come and help and assist us in order for us to get to where we need to be. Can I tell you, even right now, even if you're not experiencing anything in your life right now, you're going to experience some storms in your life. Can I tell you what would get you there through that? A little bit of prayer and just a little bit of trusting in God. 
trust that even when I don't understand, it's all working out for my good. And for his glory. Man, I'm God's child. I'm his. He loves me. He's looking out for me. And I know he'll prepare a way for me. My brother, my sister, if you're here today, and you're standing in the need of prayer, that, that, that ought to be all of us. But if you're standing in the need of prayer, we welcome you to come this morning and, and ask for a prayer for the various requests that you have. The scripture still says that the prayers of the righteous, they availeth much. I'll be the first to say, pray for me. As your minister, pray for me. As a young black man in America, pray for me. As a sinner saved by the grace of God, pray for me. I will ask once again, as they have already asked, pray for your elders. Pray for your deacons, those that are in positions of leadership. Because you thank the devil after you, he hounding them down. Keep them in your prayer and let us pray for one another. If you come here this morning and you are not a child of God, you have not yet had your sins washed away by the blood of the lamb. If at this moment you stand a guilty distance away from God, don't leave here today without making the decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Circumstances, trials, draw us nearer to God. We can see over these past few months as we've been going through this pandemic that trials and uncertainty and fear drives people to a place to where they say, hey, man, God, I need you, God. I need your help, God. I need you to make a way. He has already made a way for you before the very foundations of the world. He has made a way for you and for your soul to escape the penalty of sin. But if you remain faithful unto him until death, you can receive a crown of life that will never fade away. So my brother and my sister, if you're here today, come to Jesus this morning. Come here in his word. Romans chapter 10, verse number 17 says, So then, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. After hearing that word, you must believe the same. He said, except that you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. After belief, one must repent of their sins. What is repentance? Repentance is a change within your mind that produces a change in your action. And after repentance with your mouth, you confess the sweetest name known to mortal tongue, and that is that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And after confession, you're willing to be baptized in the watery grave of baptism. Have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you in this life and neither the life that is to come. And according to Acts chapter two and verse number 47, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord himself added to the church daily such as should be said you ain't got to wait on no board of folk to vote as to whether or not you can become a candidate for baptism you ain't got to wait to the first Sunday which will, 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 will be a baptismal Sunday but whosoever will you can come on you ain't got to wait to a certain Sunday you ain't got to wait to a certain day you can come to Jesus today and the Lord will add you to his body if you're here today and you're subject to the invitation we beck and we plead with you why not make the decision to come to Jesus now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation